I want to take a holistic look at confidence because it's not just one thing, it's many things. Confidence with me starts with my cup of coffee. Like, not really, but yes, it's true. It's all about the little things, it's the simple joys. As I sip my coffee, I just want to say thank you to Madewell, who's sponsoring today's video. Oh my god, that's so good. Let's go. Cue the intro, sis. You know she's not your average show, not your average show. to the bottom of how to boost confidence, first we need to define confidence. Confidence comes from the Latin root fidere, aka to trust oneself. It's essentially a cloak and when people put on this cloak of confidence, they are more attractive to others. When you see somebody that's oozing confidence, that didn't happen overnight. That person probably made an intention to become more confident. I was not confident. I was the shyest little dweeb. Even right now, I'm like, dang, she need to make this video for herself. I go up and down with my confidence. It's natural. And so here are some tips to make sure that you exercise your confidence, that you grow your confidence, that you boost your confidence. Because confidence is one of those invisible superpowers that will open so many doors for you that you probably didn't even know were there until you started seeing things with your confident eyes. You know what I'm saying? Or until the world started seeing you with your confidence. So cheers to trusting ourselves because at the end of the day, that is what confidence is. Building a better relationship with you, boo-boo. And before we get into it, a huge thank you to Madewell who's sponsoring today's video. My girl with curves, you know it's difficult to find clothes that fit you well. Hello? Outfit change. Okay, I gotta keep it real. This is the first year of my life where I've actually started paying close attention to aesthetic and the psychology behind it. Studies have shown that it takes seven seconds for somebody to look at you and make a judgment based on your appearance alone. I've always been one of those, it doesn't matter what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside that matters. And yes, I still believe it's what's on the inside, but I've also started to understand that when you see somebody, the physical appearance that they have is gonna make the first impression. A lot of people will approach you or not approach you based on what you look like. I didn't make this up. Madewell is sponsoring this video because they posed the question, what are you made of? And I never really considered that clothing could tell that story before I even opened my mouth. When I realized that if I looked good for me, that I could show up more confidently, I'm like, oh, okay, cool, check, time to go shopping. Now here's a little montage of all the cute clothes that Madewell sent me. the jeans that actually fit my body because girl you know these thighs if it fits your thighs it doesn't fit your butt if it fits your thighs and butt it doesn't fit your waist it's like it's a struggle and thank you made well because your jeans chef's kiss so basically i was a pretty big nerd and in my shell up until high school and in high school i forced myself to give a big speech a riveting discourse in front of three people to become the president of this business club i became the president it was great i had to eat a cookie while i was giving this speech because i was so afraid of speaking in public that i needed a reminder that i was a human being and if i was eating it reminded me of a primitive human thing maybe you want to use that trick but the point is once i gave that speech and i got the president I was able to start giving more speeches and the more speeches I gave the better at public speaking I became and it was rooted in this need for me to face my fears The second time that I faced my fears was when I lived in New York City for college and I watched my family walk away from me And I realized oh dang I gotta fend for myself now The takeaway here is put yourself in an unfamiliar place face your fears because when you have nobody But you you're gonna have your own back and there's nothing more powerful than trusting yourself and at the root That's what confidence is is. The more you put yourself out there and face your fears, the more you'll be able to do it. So you start leveling up and those doors open for you of scarier, yeah, but more exciting things. And once you start facing your fears, you're, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be good. Have no fear, you're gonna persevere. Okay, 
Mindset is the key to confidence. If you remember this one simple fact, you're gonna be on the positive road to success. You are competing with no one but yourself. You are not in competition with anybody around you. Don't pay attention to what anybody else is doing. And here's why I say that. Because it's true. Because when you boil it down, comparing yourself to others does no good. You don't have the same variables in life. You don't have the same background. You didn't start at the same level. You are on your own journey and it's up to you to develop yourself and to evolve. The minute that you tune out what everybody else is doing and you stop looking at pictures and videos and comparing yourself to other people, the minute you'll unlock your happiness, one, and two, you'll start your process of evolution. There is no good that's gonna come from comparing yourself to others. It's actually gonna set you back because instead of focusing on you, you're gonna be focusing on what you don't have, which is counterintuitive because confident people are aware of what they do have and they build upon that. Tune out all that clutter, tell everybody else, I don't really care what you're doing. You do you, boo-boo. If you do come across those people who compare themselves to you, it's okay to like snip, snip, cut them off. Confidence is contagious and so is lack thereof. And so if you're around a very self-conscious person, odds are you're gonna be picking up those tendencies and we have no time to be regressing up in this lifetime. It's about evolution, not going backwards. Plus there's evidence that shows that comparing yourself to others grows envy, which is basically like a rotting seed within you that will make you feel like you have nothing going for you, which is not true. Human beings are innately negative. It goes back to primitive times where we had to fend for ourselves and we were competing to reproduce. That genetic software hasn't changed. So our mindset has to, to compensate for the fact that our primitive little brains think that everything is a threat and think that everything is negative. It's not. And when you think about it, thinking about all the things you don't have or thinking about all the things that others have isn't gonna do you any good because it's not like thinking about it is gonna change your scenario magically. So you're just wasting time not building upon what you have, thinking about what you don't have, and then you end up with nothing. And I guarantee you that after you focus on your strengths, you're gonna feel a lot more confident than if you focus on your weaknesses. On the subject of strengths, something that I've really found helpful in building confidence is building skills. When you practice something or when you become skilled, you just innately feel good because you feel like you know something. When you start something, you probably suck. Let's be real, you pick up an instrument, you're not gonna be that good. But if you commit to it and you practice, there's this boost of dopamine that's gonna hit you because you're gonna be seeing your transformation. Because practicing something shows you what you're capable of. It shows you the transformative quality that's inside of you and that is empowering. So basically pick up a new hobby and make time to practice it because in the end you're investing in yourself and that in itself is a good thing but the outcome of investing in yourself is, you guessed it, confidence. I personally know when I feel droopy it's because I haven't exercise my brain or learned a new skill. Like it doesn't feel good when your brain is dormant. And I also wanna say that you're never too old to pick up a skill because even if you were to pick up a violin at age 60, you could be playing the New York Philharmonic by age 80. If you don't know how to help yourself, help others. I heard that saying once and I thought it was really interesting because human beings are very egocentric and we feel good when we help others. So really what it boils down to is that there's no true doing good to just do good. When you do good for others, you also do good for yourself, which is a win-win. There's scientific evidence that shows that there's a release of oxytocin, which is the hormone of compassion when you help others. You also get it when you stare deeply in a dog's eyes. So if you have a dog next to you, stare deeply into its eyes. I might need to adopt one. I'm telling you, I need that oxytocin. When you take care of yourself, you feel better, which is why when you eat well, when you work out, when you're making sure that you have a wellness plan, a wellness journey, it will take you very far. If your insides don't feel good, your outside won't feel good, and it shows. So when it comes to wellness, don't just think about the vanity that comes with feeling fit and looking good. It's really a mood booster. If you're in a funk, try getting outside, go for a walk, breathe in fresh air, and that also boosts your confidence because you're out there, you're out in life, you're living. I got a shout out to Joe club, my journalers, everybody out there with a journal in hand. Thank you. You're investing in yourself and you're getting to know yourself more. It's important to understand your voice and you're only going to learn about your voice if you start using it. And journaling is a great way to do that because you can start looking at your journals and analyzing who you are, seeing your pitfalls, seeing all of the things that you want to improve. I really learned who I was when I started journaling regularly. It's pretty meditative too. It's this act of self-care and it gives me value in my own voice. It's a part of who I am. 
If you have a goal in mind that you're just simply putting off, it's not going to make you feel good. So checking something off of your to-do list that's attainable is a mood booster. It's a confidence booster. I really want to say that toxic productivity is a thing. You shouldn't attach your self-worth with your productivity. You should, however, check off that thing that's been rotting at the bottom of your to-do list for ages because that will make you feel self-conscious. Because when you accomplish things, you feel more capable. Set up some goals that are attainable because if you start setting up these ridiculous goals, you're going to feel worse about yourself. Look at the projects that you've wanted to do for years and tackle them. Like write that book, Joe. Also a huge confidence booster is tracking your progress because once you see your own evolution, it's just gonna motivate you to do more. So it's almost like this symbiotic relationship. Like you focus on improving yourself and then the improvement will make you continue to focus on improving yourself. And it's a cycle that grows that confidence muscle that we all know and love. And another major thing that helps with confidence is defining your own enough. You could be the richest person in the world, but if you don't have your own definition of enough, you'll never have enough. And so right now, write down a list of things that you consider living a successful, rich, abundant life. And not monetarily, I'm talking about spirituality, romantically, personally, with family relationships. You need to know what your definition of enough is so that you're not always chasing something. You might already have it. The minute that we stop chasing something, we're finally confident. We're okay with who we are. We're content in our own shoes. And that is a lifetime of work. But we could start working on it today. No time like the present. The goal is to define your own version of enough and to continue working on your confidence because it is an uphill battle. Like some days I wake up confident, other days I don't. But when I don't wake up confident, I truly do those things that I just listed for you. Even right now, this isn't the most confident stage of my life, but I've learned that confidence is something you have to work on and I'm up for the challenge. So I'm working on it every day and let's keep each other accountable. Another huge thank you to Madewell for sponsoring this video. Leave a comment below what makes you confident and I will see you guys later.